This is the Beyondi robot by Beyond Imagination, and this is the first time it's been in public. The company says this will be one of the most sophisticated general purpose humanoid robots on the planet. That's a pretty big claim. With me is Dr. Harry Clore, founder and CEO of Beyond Imagination. Can you tell us about the Beyondi robot? Sure, delighted to. So Beyondi is a general purpose humanoid robot. It's piloted by a human with an AI brain that learns over time. It has a vision system that's nearly uh, real time. Uh, it is completely articulate with human-like hands and arms and head. So it can do a wide range of tasks, whether it's picking up a drill or any other instrument and using it or doing fine motor control, like picking up a pinch of salt or, or great dexterity, like grabbing a bottle opener and opening an actual Coke bottle and pouring it, whatever it is that you wish it to do within the limits of its dexterity and its, its, its uh, movements it can do. Now, you have human operators working through Beyondi for some of these tasks. How difficult is it to take those VR inputs and translate those into fine hand movements to your robot? It's very complex. Fortunately, I have a bunch of genius programmers on my team. <laughs> so, like, if you were here, I would just give you a pair of gloves, put on a VR headset, uh, and have you operate it. Or actually, I could send those to you if we weren't in the convention center because the Wi-Fi here is terrible. Uh and then you could operate it from there, or you could fly to Tokyo and operate it from there. So one of the keys things is to be able to operate it from anywhere on the planet. Um, and so we've already tested it over long distances. So you're seeing stereo vision, right eye, left eye. Uh, and we have a series of cameras. We have a camera in the chest and in the back for surround. So should you wish to have surround vision, you can. Um, but when you're doing a task, that's, that's useful when you're driving. So when you look around, you can see anywhere and you can look up and see behind you. Uh, and normal view is stereo vision, just like your eyes. And it's limited to, of course, the headset that you're using. Um, and we are agnostic to uh, VR headsets. And then you control through, through gloves so that you can naturally control the robot. You can also hear like a human hears and speak through the robot. One of my uses would immediately be once I have multiple uh, robots, it's the first one. I'll stick one in my mom's house. She's 92. Uh, she has three caretakers to help take care of her. I'm a thousand miles from her. I would be able to pop in, make her meals in the morning, be able to go in the garden with her, play games, help her get her pills. And so would my other family members. So one of the first uses of this in terms of uh, the general public is be able to solve the elderly crisis. Now, you've done some real-world tests at an elderly care facility. That's correct, right? So could you tell us how that went and, and what you learned from it? Yes. So we've done our first of many pilots that are coming out uh, this year. And that pilot study was at True Pace uh, in Colorado. And there we had doctors and nurses and even administrators test and see how well they could operate the robot. They were immediately sold on it, a 100% sort of positive reaction. And you've also got some high hopes for Beyondi in the future. Like, if I read this right, work in space, right? Yeah. So we are partnered today with Zero G. Uh, and so we're at the Zero G booth, so Zero G and Beyond Imagination. We're going to be in the future putting Beyond Me on their Zero G flights where they do experiments. So that will enable, if you're an operator and you don't want to be up on the plane or say they need to do 100 parabolas, you can do that from the safety of the ground and operate it. Myself, I would always go in the plane because it's fun, but uh, uh, you could do that. We are working with intuitive machines, and I can't say anything uh, officially right now, but we will be sticking something up on the moon, a part of the robot, uh, very soon. That sounds wild. Now, on your site, you have an equation on your site that reads humans plus Beyondi platform VR plus Beyondi plus ever-evolving AI brain. Your plan is to take Beyondi from a human-operated machine to an autonomous one. How long have you been testing this, and how has that worked out? So uh, I would say we're, we're at the very start of this. So we know... We know how to do it, and we know all the components, and we're starting to test it. But you, the, the robot was really finished this year, uh, and so uh, we have it running at, at the booth doing some very simple things by itself. Uh, but uh, as we bring it out to the commercial market, just like Tesla, so think of it as an electronic vehicle, but not one that you physically climb into, but one that you virtually climb into. So like a Tesla, it's first operated by a human, but over time, 
uh, that data goes up to the cloud in the same way our data will go up to the cloud and train the AI brain so it can learn these tasks. Now, why the fascination with a humanoid robot? It seems like you didn't necessarily need to have a head on this thing to have two arms. You could have pinchers if you wanted. Uh, do you find that people are more receptive to a humanoid robot or are they slightly afraid of a humanoid robot? So it turns out that while you might think the things you just said are correct, they're actually not. The entire world is built for humans. And we've tested over 20, 30 years that, for instance, having real hands enables me to do everything from pick up a pinch of salt to getting a drill and drilling a hole to uh, any task that I would need to do. Um, if I had pinchers, I'm very limited. That's the reason we evolved to have thumbs. So our robot has very articulate thumbs. Uh, your number of tasks you could do would be highly limited. Uh, the, uh, the same thing for a head. When you do a task, you look around naturally and, and you pick up objects and do them. The point of our robot is to be general purpose. So the closer we build it to a human, the more things it'll be able to do and the better it'll be able to learn them because you're teaching it as a human. Now, the robot that you have at CES right now is on wheels. Do you have a bipedal robot coming as well? No, we decided to go in a different direction. Um, uh, I know the guys at Boston Dynamic and Honda and Toyota, and they've, they've made all these leg things. But unfortunately, over 20, 30 years and many billions of dollars, I've yet to see them even do one task, one pilot study, one anything. And so... They're fantastic for showing leg locomotion. However, you and I are sitting down almost every job that you do. You're either standing up or you're sitting down or you, you could wheel across the floor just as easily as walk across the floor. So we focused on the ability to do tasks, commercial tasks, human tasks versus uh, doing things with legs. That's a great answer. I wanted to ask, uh, you were talking about availability and this is coming to market. What is your timing for these robots to be available? And do you have any customers lined up already? So I can't reveal who and what, but we're, we're taking advanced orders. Um, and the uh, we may do some singular roll out, rollouts at the end of the, this year or the beginning of next. Um, and I anticipate once we figure out all the advanced orders, rolling out sometime uh, 23 um, and uh, and then scaling up from there. What does the Omni cost? So right now, as you can imagine, it's like building a, a the first Tesla. So these first ones will roll out around 150 to 200K. And then over time, as we scale up again, like a Tesla, uh, the price will uh, drop down. So that's going to be 90, then 80, then 60. So uh, that's, that's the plan. Dr. Harry Clore of Beyond Imagination, thank you very much. For more, check out all the videos on our YouTube channel as well as CNET.com. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and I'll see you online.